So we've been in this house for about two years now and we finally just finished renovating this basement room and we can finally start furnishing it. So let me show you that journey. So here's what the basement room looked like at the beginning of this project. We are going through our wedding so we are storing a lot of the items that we had for that wedding in here. This room didn't have much natural lighting so I had to put up temporary lighting like this. There were also a lot of leftover wall anchors that were obviously damaged. The house also came with registers that looked like this, they are cracked along the trim. And the crown molding in this room could use a fresh application of caulk as well. And this is everything cleared out. Okay, so today we are just going to remove this trim, as well as, I don't know what that's called, like a quarter round, but not really. Uh, I'm going to remove it up until here because once it gets to over here, then I have to start dealing with the window. And this is already pretty well done. And then the rest of that uh, has no damage. If you can look over here, you can see that there's termite damage from about a year and a half ago. And so that's why we need to remove it. I knew that I was also going to eventually replace the trim. So I put this insulating foam around it. It doesn't look very good. So I'm going to remove that today. But uh, in the meantime, it did uh, help insulate the house a little bit more. The previous owners also did a pretty bad job of patching holes in the wall. Along one of the walls, we have some wood paneling and they actually used um, joint compound or maybe even just a putty to go over it with. So instead of wood filler, they used um, drywall. Okay, so we've got that trim piece off and you can see all the termite damage. Not too much actually, but they came from here. Um, you can also see that the previous owner used, I don't know what this is, it has uh, shims to put that trim on. There are some floating shelves on this wall and the previous owners, instead of putting those floating shelves into studs, they just used an excessive amount of wall anchors and that made patching these holes a little bit harder. You can see here that they used wall anchors on this other wall as well, but you can see how much damage there was just because they tried to reposition those. And they were using these types of wall anchors, so pulling them out would just cause more damage. So I decided to cut rectangles around them using my oscillating tool. And the rectangles would make it a little bit easier to patch with drywall further down. Okay, so um, these were the floating shelves and the floating shelves had about 16 screws per each one. So instead of doing like, I don't know, 16 different patches, I decided to just do two long rectangles and I'm gonna patch those for here. Um, I've cleaned this up as much as I can. I could probably vacuum a little bit more, but I've got these shims that I cut out of quarter inch plywood. And that's because this piece of wood is taller than there. So just to make it a little bit more flush so that the piece of wood doesn't sit like that. So here's the cutout of the shelves from before. And I just put these paint stairs uh, to add as backers so that when I put this in, it won't fall through. Just like that. That way it's at least somewhat flush rather than going sinking into the wall and I have to uh, raise that up with mud. After screwing in the drywall with some drywall screws, I used this joint compound that advertises itself as low dust, but we'll see how that is later. I also used some tape to bridge those gaps in the drywall as well, and this is what it looked like after about a day of work. And then the next day, after it had dried, I got a sanding block to knock down any rough patches. You can see that this low dust joint compound is kind of working, but not really. It's still making a mess. 
Anyways, after sanding it down, I used my 12 inch drywall knife to feather out the joints even more and make it that much better. I'm not like the best drywaller in the world, but with enough layers and enough patience, I can get it close enough to where I'm happy with it. While the drywall is still drying, I caulked around the seams of the trim that I had added earlier. I used this little trick that I learned on Instagram where you get some glass cleaner and spray that on the caulk. And what that does is it creates sort of like a lubricating barrier between the caulk and your fingers so that it slides that much easier and makes a little bit less of a mess. All right, so here's a quick little update. So I've patched those pieces. I still need to sand those and same thing for these. I've replaced this trim. Uh, annoyingly, this was five and a half inches and over here was six and a half. So I had to get two separate sizes of wood despite thinking they were the same size. On the trim, I've replaced that and caulked along the edges um, as well as caulk the rest of the room. Here's what the rest of the room used to look like before the caulking. You can see that because there's no caulk, you can see the black gaps or the shadows in between the trim pieces. It's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was before. So I did see some of the paper coming up, so I just added a little bit more uh, mud to it and it should look fine once it dries. All right, so I have prepped the floor and the walls are dried now. And so today I'm going to be sanding the walls as well as prepping the rest of the room for paint later today. You can see over here, I've got some vents for the HVAC. Um, those are actually uh, nailed in instead of screwed in, so I have to remove those. Um, this light hanging from the ceiling, I have to remove those. And these doors, I have to remove those. So pretty much at this point, I'm just prepping for paint. So sanding, and then after uh, sanding, there's gonna be a bunch of dust on the wall. So I'll have to just get like a sort of moist towel, damp towel to wipe all that down. To prep for painting, I removed the window blinds as well as the covers for the registers, and then I primed where I had drywalled earlier in the week. From what I understand, you only really need to prime raw drywall or raw wood. If it's already been painted before, that kind of acts as its own layer of primer. I'm doing a two-tone color in this room, and I'm using Agreeable Gray by Sherman Williams, which I've used in other parts of this house before. I'm using some leftover and mixing it with a new can just in case there's some color variation between the two cans. To cut in on this room, I'm using a two inch brush, and this is actually my first time freehand cutting in. Normally I'd use a uh, blue painter's tape to make sure that I'm not going over the edges, but I think I did okay here. I guess it just takes some practice. Anyways, after I had cut in, I just did a normal rolling technique, just a straight up W. And you can see in this video where I cut in, it was a little bit light, so I definitely went in with a second coat to make sure that I had full coverage. Even with that issue there, it still looks awesome to like be able to see this room transform like this, going from this kind of weird looking blue to something that looks a little bit more modern, I guess, and matches with the rest of the house a little bit better. While the gray was drying, I went in with a fresh coat of white paint to the bottom part of this room, and it was starting to look a lot better. And here's a little trick that I use to make sure that my rollers and paint brushes aren't getting dried out. If I'm doing an extended paint or needing to do multiple coats, I just wrap it in some foil or put it in some sort of plastic bag, then put it in the fridge. All right, so here's the vent that the AC comes out of, and it looks pretty gnarly. I don't know who installed this, but they did a pretty bad job. So I tried originally adding some mud around it to see if that would make it look a little bit better or if I could just avoid doing this at all. But what I ended up doing was going to the store and buying a metal blade for my oscillating tool. This let me cut the metal ducking that was protruding from the ceiling. And after that was done, I added a few coats of mud and this is what it looked like afterwards. It looked more flush and I was able to finally add a register to it. With the registers repaired, I could finally paint the ceiling and that's what the ceiling looks like in the hallway. It looked like the previous owners kind of gave up halfway painting through that ceiling. I also had to paint this little hallway as well as the stairs going up to the main floor. We are finally getting to the end of the tunnel. To update the room a little bit more, I also updated all of the outlets in this room, and then my wife got a little desk from Target, and we assembled that for her. All right, so it's been a few weeks since the last clip, and so here are some things that have changed so far. So over here in this corner, we put together my wife's desk, and we got a little lamp for her to work, as well as this cart for crafts. 
Over here, we put a gallery wall featuring pictures of our wedding. These are just Riba frames from Ikea and they're about $8 each, so very affordable. Over here in this corner, I put a temporary lamp just to add some more fill lighting into this room. We also got this zigzag rug. It kind of lightens up the space, gives a little bit more visual interest. It's actually a little bit off beige and it makes the room feel a little bit warmer. In the corner, we do have a couch coming in, but because of everything that's going on, it's a little bit delayed. Over here in this corner, we have a kind of modern looking lamp from Target, as well as a space heater on the floor because this room does get a little bit cold in the winter. And along this wall, we plan to put a media console as well as mount a TV onto the wall. These closets, once it becomes a little bit warmer, I'll take them down and take them outside, prime them, then paint them black so that they match a little bit more of the color scheme that we have going on in the rest of the room. So I know that this was a little bit of a longer video and I didn't really teach that much, but hopefully you guys learned something along the way and that you enjoyed the video at least, or at least like seeing the house come together. So thank you for watching and until next time, this has been John Hang. Look forward to making more videos for you guys and until next time.